Okay, um, thanks for coming along to our presentation. Um, I'm Liz Harris, I'm from the University of Southampton, and I'm accompanied by two Christmas elves. <laughs> 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 Flatly refused to put their costumes on. <laughs> there are two students, digital champion students from the university, level two now, on yep. Web Science. Yep. Mm -hmm. and we've been working on a project called Students as Creators and Change Agents. And the reason we really wanted to come to this conference and talk to you guys about it was to emphasise the role that social media has played um, in the development um, of this project. So my role here is just really to introduce it, to say a few words about um, what the project is, and then these guys are going to explain more about what, what they've done and the impact that they've had um, with using social media within this new programme. So, we, we shortened the title to Sakaka. <laughs> we say that quickly. <laughs> Students as creators and change agents. Um, we had some money from the university nearly three years ago now um, to set up a new degree programme in business management. And we wanted to take the opportunity to do something really quite different. Um, not just you know another standard boring programme to go with all the other standard boring programmes that we do but um, to, to really involve students at all stages in developing the programme and delivering the programme and evaluating the programme. And we're expecting quite a large number of applications. We weren't quite expecting to have 200 students in the first year, which is what we actually did. Uh, and again, we've just started the second year, another 200. So we've now got 400 students on the first two years of this programme. So there are some challenges around you know, managing large class sizes and that kind of thing, which we won't really go into here in any, any detail. But we really wanted to make sure that um, not only was the content really up to date and relevant for these students going forward into their careers, but also that we'd um, you know, really focus on getting students involved at every stage of the programme itself. This is a team picture. Um, this was taken last year, so this is the first group of students, including the two Tom's here, I think. <laughs> um, this group is now twice the size because we've now started level two, so we've got a, a new group of first year students who are part of this management team. So we've got, I think, 20 odd students and four members of staff now involved in this. So this is what the um, first year of the programme looks like. Uh, the, the four modules that are in red are the ones that we particularly designed from scratch. Um, we really wanted to, to look at business in a different way, looking at history and philosophy uh, and all sorts of um, perhaps more unusual perspectives rather than just the standard level one of a degree where you've got marketing, HRM, blah, blah, blah. So we're really looking at those four modules is where the main input came from. Do you want to use it on? Yeah. And, and I guess I'm preaching to the converted here very much. Um, I mean, this is really the second box was where we, we saw ourselves, we really wanted to get away from the standard approach of uh, you know, just giving content to people and hoping they, hoping they would absorb it. Um, and we really wanted to see whether we could get more deep learning going on with the involvement of students and using um, a student group to input new ideas and also to encourage their fellow students to become more active and take um, a more prominent role in the course. So that, that's really what we were trying to aim at. And so the sorts of things that we did, and the, the guys will talk about this in more detail in a moment, but we really wanted to integrate technology in an, in an effective a way as possible, and not just sort of stick a load of stuff in and see what's done, but uh, really, really think about what worked best, and getting ongoing feedback from the groups, making sure we mixed online and offline and didn't force people into uh, one camp or the other, um, and really try and live the whole kind of blended approach as it was intended. So those are some of the things that we've uh, incorporated, and I'm going to hand over to Tom and Tom now to tell you a bit more about what they did. I'll just hold it so I can pass it on to Tom, I think. Um, <laughs> Right, so Lisa's whipped through the general theory behind the project and um, now Tom and I are going to try and talk about social media um, a little bit more and the role that that's had to play in co-creation because as you can see it's quite a, a big project. We've given this talk a number of times um, as, 
as you'll probably hear. Um, the best way we've found to introduce and sort of summarise it is to give you a three-stage summary, a snapshot, if you will, of what we've, what's happened in the project in the past week, in the past month, and in the past year. Um, so in the past week, um, it's obviously been the last week of term, so we've been celebrating, but um, we've also written an abstract for a conference um, in London at UCL, which is coming up all around the idea of co-created learning. Um, we've completed a 3,000 word case study um, on a conference we ran for first year undergraduates when they joined this year to be submitted to an international journal. Um, we've worked on collecting feedback from that conference for the case study. Um, and then in the past month, we've worked on supporting the startup of the first year co creation groups so and the year behind us. Um, we've worked with a number of staff in the business school on the introduction of a bo uh, an enterprise scheme for students supported by by Boeing, which is really exciting. Um, we've organised a run totally independent of the business school, uh, a field trip to Cadbury World for first year students, which was well supported. Um, and we've, all, um, we've also supported a number of live events, kept the blog running, kept the Twitter running, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, when we first started giving this presentation, it was easy to talk about what happened in the past year, but now it would take me what feels like a year to run through everything that's happened. Um, so we, we've spoken at conferences across the world, um, as a group, obviously not just me. Um, uh, yeah, we've spoken of uh, a, a huge range of conferences, we've published a number of papers, we've published a number of videos, uh, we've kept the blog running, kept the Twitter running, taught sessions on digital literacy, a whole range of stuff. Um, but I'm going to try and keep it tightly focused to social media, so we'll get going on that now. Cheers. So thank you, Tom. And I just want to reiterate that this is a very holistic project. A lot of what we do is based around engagement of the student cohort as opposed to just social media. But we have found through working on the project over the past couple of years that social media is an inherent part of student engagement. There's quite a negative stereotype, I think, has been propagated recently of young teenagers, people my age and below, spending most of their time, whether this be a just or not stereotype, mm -hmm. on their phone, on devices. And we found that whether or not this be true, that they do like to spend a lot of the time engaging with us over social media as opposed to the more traditional ways face to face that you might expect from a lecture. So up there is a brief list of some of the things that we've been engaging in online in an attempt to try and make sure that students feel include, included and have the opportunity to shape their learning process. Well, we'll go through all these individually, but I just want to say very quickly that the blog and the social media, and to an extent, digital literary education, are the biggest three projects that we've been working on throughout the last year. Thank you. So, as Tom said, we're now going to attempt to talk you through them, but the important thing to bear in mind is that these are all co-created resources. None of them are all students, and none of them are all staff. Okay, we all work together a lot on, on all of them. This is the landing page for our blog. There's the nice web link there if you'd like to go on it and boost our hit counter. Um, we keep the blog running um, all year round, over the summer, over Christmas breaks, um, etc. And we there's a huge variety of articles on there, again, from staff, from students, from guest lecturers. We share the whole articles if they're particularly interesting or relevant for students' assignments. We will post updates on the project itself, um, like we'll be writing a blog post for example on our experiences at this conference today and that's something that we've done from the very beginning of the project to maintain transparency because obviously there's, there's 20 of us in this project and like Lisa said there's 400 students on, on the course as a whole so we don't want to isolate the, the students who aren't involved in the project. So we will continually provide updates and, and one of the things we're big on this year is on book reviews. Um, so these are produced by students who are not in the co-creation group. The books are bought by the school um, and then they're tasked with, re with reading them and with reviewing them. Um, there's a rundown of categories there that can probably give you a better idea of exactly what goes on there. Um, as I say, well, you're welcome to visit it. Um, and we've got a summary of our project on there as well. But the blog we kind of see as, as the hub of the project as a whole. Um, it's the landing space for a lot of students who want to find out more about the project and it's a key part for us of creating what we've termed a digital learning environment. So because we're partnering it with, with an inquiry-based learning approach in the modules, we feel that we need, we need to create a digital learning environment and indeed a physical learning environment so the students constantly feel like they are learning during their time at university. So hopefully through wider reading and through some targeted reading which will release around assignment time, we've been able to do that. And we've had, since its launch, um, 
it's October last year, I think, so just over a year ago now, we've had over three and a half thousand unique views on it, and we've had about a thousand in the past month. So we're growing at quite a steady rate. And the, the great thing for me is, as, we, as I say, we've quoted the number, there's 400 students on it, yet we're getting a thousand hits in a month. So its reach is really quite big, which is great to see. So one of the other big things alongside the blog that the co-design group has been working on is our social media presence. We find that the marketing of the group, particularly among the student cohort, is really important. And we want to try and make sure we can reach out to as many people as we can. When you have 400 people in one program, this can be a bit of a challenge to do physically. So we have found, similar to the Yorkshire St. John group, who we, uh, the presentation we attended earlier, that Twitter is a really good way for us to engage with the students. We use Twitter, we've identified how we best interact with students down to approximately three areas. We use it for the dissemination of information, whether this be upcoming assignments, really interesting lectures, or general articles that someone might find online choose to share. We have the creation of spaces for discussion. If we create a hashtag, we can try and promote people to discuss, share ideas outside of what they might do within a typical lecture environment, where the space of a lecture theatre isn't really conductive to having an open discussion with not only other students, but the lecturers. And then also, to build on that a bit, the possibility for students to engage with lecturers on a slightly less formal basis. Almost every university will have their own inbuilt emails, for example, wherein you have the expectations of formality, taking the interaction outside of the social, outside of emails onto social media allows for a more open discussion about any area of interest between the students, each other and the lecturers. So to build on this, we find that there are a variety of social media platforms and indeed the project we're working on this year is to increase the scope beyond just Twitter, push to the Facebook and see if we can move more onto different social media platforms. One of the reasons we found for Facebook not working quite as well is people have a single Facebook account. Facebook limits you to only having one account. This means that people, and forever how long they might have had it, have always associated it with their personal life. Twitter, on the other hand, has no such limit. You can create, and this is something that we've been pushing for within the co-design group, an academic or a professional Twitter account. I myself have two Twitter accounts, as does Tom. Maybe Lisa, not too sure. We have a personal Twitter account where you can send your tweets out of cute selfies with your puppy or whatever, and an academic account, which I've been tweeting from today and Tom has as well. So we think it's really important for there to be a dissemination of students, partly because of the whole lecture scare people putting something that might put them out of a job in the future, but also because on Facebook, people feel there is a, a barrier almost between them and a lecturer, given that very few lecturers are on Facebook for whatever reason, and the fact it's easier to engage on Twitter, we have found Twitter to be the most successful so far in the first year. But again, like I said, this is something we want to work on. Okay, so th those are the two main blogging social media bits we wanted to talk about, so we're now going to move on to a couple of the other projects. This was something we worked on quite heavily over the summer. Um, we a suite, a, six, uh, a suite of six what we termed modlets, that's difficult to say. Um, <laughs> We had a welcome one referencing one academic writing, digital literacy, um, and there were, there were a couple of other ones just generally related to uni life and to moving into Southampton. These were all written by students on the co-design group and then read over by staff um, in a joint editorial process. It wasn't students produce it, staff hack it to pieces and it looks totally different. Um, students had the final say. Uh, and then they were handed to me and Tom who uh, developed them and made them interactive online using the same software we used on our resource earlier, if any of you have come across that on Twitter yet. Um, we put them all onto this site and then unfortunately they had to go through a review um, in Southampton, uh, in the uni business schools, um, learning uh, an innovation office I think it was called. Um, and they felt that they were too unofficial, too informal um, to be offering guidance around academic writing, referencing matters like that, and there was too much standard guidelines produced by the uni already, it would conflict the student and confuse them. So unfortunately, none of them ended up getting released um, at the time, but we've refactored, we refactored them into a PDF document, so we removed the interactivity and stamped the word unofficial over everything, um, and released it as an unofficial um, guide to first year on the blog. Um, and that's been our most popular post, and that's had nearly 800 people look at it. Um, and I don't know why, because they're only 200 the first year, so clearly second year still needs some help as well. Um, but Modlitz is 
uh, as something we hope to pick up again because in the university the modlet project is is alive and well um, there are modlets being developed in other faculties for other purposes for professional development purposes um, and that, that's something we really like to introduce to undergraduate um, education um, I haven't really defined modlet it's basically just a, a small tiny little sort of three four hour online course that you just work your way through um, there's no formal assessment no formal progress but just like a tiny module to help build your skills Thank you. So something that myself and Tom have been invited to do is to teach a digital literacy session to the first years. We did this last year when we were first years, which I'd say is quite nerve wracking, teaching your friends in digital literacy. And we've been invited back to do it again. And um, this concept, digital literacy, is, as I said earlier, making sure that your online persona is suitable for your progression through the academic and professional world but also through ensuring that you can, as a person, feel safe to use any digital resource that there is. And given the spread of the internet, this is quite important nowadays. We broke our session down into the four areas you can see on the board. So we've got information management, creating materials, effective communication, and identity. I personally feel identity is one of the strongest points, and this is something we really heavily focus on. But creating materials is also something that every student, and I'm sure most academics, will have to go through, making presentations, making them look nice, etc. We've identified a series of resources that will be helpful towards this, and I was following some of the sessions earlier today, I think we can really build on the areas that we have got. Thank you. Um, this slide um, I made and I called it Innovative Technological Engagement and it's basically an anything else slide. Um, so there's a screenshot there of an example of one of the conferences we went to, uh, Tom and myself, over the summer, um, just to show the, the transparency element and that we're sharing not only the fact we have been to the conference, we're sharing the slides that we're producing, we're sharing the theory, we're sharing the discussions that we've had in the hope that we can show students um, and make them realise all the work that's going into the learning they're experiencing, which is obviously incredibly important in, in this current higher education climate when the cost is so high. Um, this is a screenshot from ActionBound. I don't know if any of you have come across that app before. Um, which is something we developed in the previous term. Um, so it, it, it's an app that lets you create basically a, a race around the city or around the geographical area. So we had a race around Southampton. Um, and for those of you who know Southampton, we, you'd go from the airport and then sort of down through the high street into the main shopping area through the loosely termed financial district, transport hubs and, and, and things like that. Um, answering questions related to business and related to your syllabus at each point. Um, and we ran it as a competition and everyone who got the questions right in the shortest period of time and visited every wonderful spot Southampton had to offer um, got, got prizes and, and things like that. Um, and the engagement in that was really good. Um, but this, were, uh, this wasn't our idea, this wasn't mine and Tom's idea. We um, put it together because technology is our area of interest, so we like, I didn't know how to do this, we, it was a lot of trial and error. Um, basically, we, the great thing about the co-creation group is that by having a large group and a diverse group, people come up to us and say, oh, we want to boost student engagement in this way, or oh, have you heard about this, or could we do this, is it, is it even possible to do this? So it, it's challenging at times because it can be challenging implementing these things and challenging explaining to people why we can't implement their fantastic idea. But it allows for a massive amount of variety, which is obviously important for student engagement and especially with that size of cohort because it's going to, different things are going to appeal to, to different students. Um, so we really hope to continue innovative technological engagement in the future through a wide variety of methods. Um, and being here today is actually massively helpful for that because we're hearing about things that we didn't know existed, which is great. So alongside email, we find that partner communication is really important within the co-design group and more broadly within the entire student cohort. For this reason, we've taken up using WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger, for those who don't recognise the logos, as the primary way for us to communicate it between the group. We use WhatsApp as a slightly more formal way of communicating so we have our lecturers on there this is where communicative ideas talk about conferences papers possibly push lecturers towards deadlines where they're not meeting the the abstracts and then we use facebook messenger as a slightly less formal this is where we have our co-design group for example this allows us to keep up to date with each other without following those really tedious email chains where you have 50 emails you can't find out who's mentioned what so i see we're starting to run out of time so we have to be quick now.
Yes, we are. Um, so one of the most important things for us and one of the biggest challenges we face, which is why they're both on the same slide, is to gather feedback. Um, so you can read through some of the quotes on there um, and we'll make the slides available, obviously. Um, but we've also got a little video from a couple of members of the co-design group that I'll play you now, just showing some feedback. I'm a professor of co-design. I really like co-design because it gives us the opportunity to have more say over our modules, which is great, but in terms of improvement, I think there's a clear structure to what we can choose that we get. Hi there, I'm Sam, I'm a second year member of the co-design group, and the reason I like it is because it makes us truly invested in our course, so we have a direct responsibility for making sure it goes well. I'm Stephen Mantori, I'm Principal Teaching Fellow at the University of Southampton Business School. I'm involved as a module co-leader in one of the co-design modules as part of the Business Management Programme. I love it because it revolutionises the relationship with students, the level of engagement and involvement between us all is fantastic. The new opportunities and stretch that we will experience in our learning, including my own learning, Particularly my own learning, if I'm being a bit selfish about it, it's fantastic. Okay, so that, as I say, there's a little bit of feedback from a few members of, of the group, and there's some quotes there. But of course, we can't just pretend it's all good because we face challenges on an almost daily basis in this project. Um, logistical and timetabling is one of the hardest things when you're trying to pl plan um, new activities uh, in, in the real world as opposed to the digital world to boost student engagement because. Space is an issue, the size of the cohort is an issue, um, and sometimes, as you can see from, from the third point, the support internally from some members of staff is not as high as it could be. Um, we also, um, inside the group, we're having a, 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 a tough time at the moment working out a governance structure, because as I said, the key point of it is that it remains fluid and that everything is co-created and that the academics are not... Um, in, uh, in any way above the students or in any way a figure of authority within the group. Um, so we're trying to avoid that and we've always tried to, to run it as sort of a cooperative, I think was the word that we, we came up with. Um, but we're struggling with that at the moment and we're being honest about that and I think in the next term we're going to have to have some frank discussions about that. Um, I'll just let Tom quickly talk about the future and then we'll move on. So very, very quickly then, you can see up there what we aim to do on a more literal point of view. However, the most important part is, for us anyway, to increase student engagement. We have typically found, and this is definitely not qualitatively based, but that the student cohort can be roughly broken down into thirds. We have the hyper-engaged third, the third who we can predict will almost definitely get first or two ones, turn up to every lecture, engage with us on social media. We have the medium third, as you call it, turn up to most lectures, relatively engaged, almost your average student. Then you have your, what we termed the disengaged third. These are the people who don't turn up to lectures, can pose a problem for the continuity of the cohort. And these are the people who we're really aiming towards, making sure that a lot of the activities we do, whether this be online or offline, where we go to Cambridge World, for example, these are the people we're really trying to influence towards the betterment of the co-design project. Okay. Okay, um, I think we've uh, just about exceeded our, our time, so uh, you can read these for yourselves. It's, it's really just a summary slide which uh, identifies some of the, the benefits we've had so far uh, from the project. And so I, I won't go through them all point by point, but I just wanted to end by thanking Tom and Tom very much. I mean, they've, they've worked incredibly hard on, on all of this, and you can see some of the things they've, they've been up to and inspiring other people to, to join in, and they've been really great ambassadors for the university. So thank you all for listening.